All right, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the graph of uh, radical functions. Let's talk about the square root of x. Um, let's start our table with the square root of 0. Well, square root of 0 is 0. So I know I'm going to have a point here. Um, so if we, let's actually do it right, f of x. Uh, what about the square root of 1? 1. What else do we know the square root of? Pretty easy. About 4. It's 2. Now, can I have the square root of a negative number? No. So there's not going to be anything over here. The square root of 4 is 2. Um, another one, uh, square root of 9, would be 3. Now, some people want to say that the radical function... Um, has negatives as well, and I want I want to show you that the square root of x is only positive answers. When we've already said it's a positive square root, we're only getting positive answers out. Um, so what is our domain here? Well, it's zero to infinity, so I could say that x is greater than or equal to zero, or I can use our notation, uh, interval notation, our range, our output on our rational function is only positive numbers, so it's 0 to infinity. x-intercept, or well, right here on the x-axis, so that's 0, 0. y-intercept, guess what, it's the same place. Now, the difference here between this one and the cube root. The cube root. Can we take the cube root of negative numbers? Yes, that's the only way we'll get a negative number back. Um, so if we look at that on our calculator, I'm going to change this and say square root to cube root. Um, now, if you're not sure where to go for that, if you hit the math button, uh, the fourth option here is cube root of x, and let's look at the graph. So we are able to get negative answers, and we are able to plug in negative values for x here. Um, so if I looked at my table, I could find some points to plug in. Uh, negative 1 gives me negative 1, which we already should have known. Uh, 0 gives me 0. 1 gives me 1. What else can I take the cube root of pretty easy? Ah, 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So I have this nice little uh, curve. And if we turned it on the side, it kind of looks like x cubed. Um, now, if we look at the domain, it keeps going. It doesn't matter what kind of number we plug in here. We can plug in all real numbers. So you can do all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Now, also, what we get out of this can be negative or positive. It's going to be all real numbers as well. So that's the big difference with even roots and odd roots. Even roots, our domain and range, are only positive numbers. For odds, it's all real numbers. Now, what is alike is our parent functions. Our x-intercept is at 0, 0. And our y-intercept is also at 0, 0. So that's things we want to make sure we notice. Now, I want to talk about transformations of these graphs. What is going to happen if I take the square root function and add 3? Well, we should know that's going to move my graph up 3. Now, when it physically moves it up 3, is it going to change the domain, what I can plug in for x? No. That is still going to be 0 to infinity. Now, since it's moved it up, it is going to change the range, though. I've moved it up off of the x-axis, so I'm not going to have an x-intercept. My y-intercept has moved up from 0, 0, 3 steps, so my y-intercept is now going to be 0, 3. If I was unsure of any of this, you can always graph it in your calculator to double check. Um, let's continue going through all these transformations. What happens when we subtract 3 at the end? You're absolutely right. It's going to move it down. 3. 
Is that going to change the domain at all? No. It will change my range, though. And if x intercept, x intercept is what's going to make y be 0. So let's see. That would be what would make y be 0. That would be 9. What is my y intercept? If I plug in 0, square root of 0 is 0. So negative 3. Now, I'm, I'm kind of walking you through this, but I think you can uh, find those on your own. Cube root of x plus 2 moves it up 2. Cube root of x minus 2 would go down 2. Now, the beautiful thing about the domain and range of your cubic functions is that it's always all real numbers. Always all real numbers. So let's just continue with the translation. What happens when I subtract 4 from the x? I hope you remember that from previously. It is going to move it right 4. What happens when we add 4? Moves it left 4. Remember, what you do to the x comes out opposite from what you would think. So adding 5 to the x moves it left. And subtracting moves it right. So I really want you to think about what's going to happen here. If we subtract 3 from the x, it's going to go right 3. And the plus 5 moves it up 5. 